Well, I will uh, wrap us up with, with that. I think we've covered a lot of ground today and got a lot of good feedback. And, and for those of you listening that have, this has provoked some further questions in, uh, we certainly welcome your questions, comments. Uh, we'd love to unpack this a bit more. Look, we're humble enough and, and cognizant enough of the geopolitical volatility, currency volatility that is correlated there, too, that we don't take a massive weighting in the asset class. We probably overweight most global benchmarks, but in terms of even our own kind of absolute weighting, it's a single digit weighting for those clients we think it's appropriate for, for the most part, maybe low double digits for certain more aggressive clients. We're not looking to go put 20, 30, let alone 50% of client capital in the EM, but we do think there's a growth story that has a value uh, uh, basis for investing. And, and it is fundamentally driven and it's company driven, bottom up. And, and, and I would like to conclude with something that was a fundamental game changing factoid in my understanding of this. And that was 1993 to 2013. 20 year period covered a lot of geopolitical events, covered a lot of macro, and yet you had one country immediately to the United States South that had grown their economy at about one to two percent a year, had been in recession about half of that time. And that was Mexico. Their stock market was up 18.6 percent for 20 years. Then you had a country on the other side of the world that had gone through the largest. CAGR, compound annual growth rate of economic growth of any country in history in that period, and that was China, and that they had essentially grown something in the range of real GDP growth, net of inflation, 8, 9, 10% a year for 20 years, and their stock market was dead flat, maybe up 1% a year. The decorrelation between economic growth and company performance, stock market performance, earnings, is massive. It's true even in the U.S., where sometimes there's a big decoupling from GDP growth and, and, and uh, earnings results, but it's even more true in a lot of the emerging market stories. So simply saying, I like Minnesota, does not give you a good investment result. I like China. I don't like India. It doesn't mean anything. Investors need companies because the point of investing is to compound your capital around earnings growth. Earnings growth comes from free enterprise. Free enterprise is the greatest gift for enhancing the quality of life and the results of your portfolio in human history. We're glad to be investing alongside this world-changing phenomena. Thank you for listening to this week's Dividend Cafe. We will come back to you next week with all of our best ideas and thoughts about whatever we can come up with, <laughs> depending on the subject at hand. Thanks so much.